Good evening, gang. Okay, I know I don't normally make a afternoon video, but I'm going to make this one because I posed a question to y'all at lunch and I went back and read the comments as I was watching the market close and a whole bunch of you seem to be interested in me describing or explaining the difference between APY, annual percentage yield, and annual percentage rate, APR. Okay. And I mean, we see this in every aspect of our life, you know, car payments, CDs, your savings account interest whatsoever. So what I wanted to do was walk you through some. And considering what happened today, I'll give you a hint. Don't be afraid to open up your computer and go look at your 401k statement, okay? Because the Dow closed up 2,962 points. The S&P was up 465, and the NASDAQ was up 1,857, okay? It was a good day on the market. The market made up, just using the Dow, for example, three quarters of what it's lost in the last week today, okay? In a case you didn't see why, basically what happened is Trump put a 90-day pause on all the countries that he was going to put tariffs on who have said, we want to come to the negotiation table. The ones who decided to put retaliatory tariffs on the United States, I'm talking to you, China. Yeah, you got your tariffs raised. China's now at 125%, okay? So yes, Trump's getting what he wanted, okay? Come to the negotiation table. We're going to hammer this thing out to be fair, and that's it. You don't want to play fair, and we'll make your life miserable. So, all right. So what I want to do is I want to show you in the best way I know how to learn, which is visual. Okay, And I want to show you some examples. They're all hypothetical. All right. And again, I'm going to qualify all this. I'm not giving anybody financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy anything. I'm making up a good portion of the numbers here. Just round numbers are a lot easier to explain to people than going off four, five, six decimal points out. Okay. So give me this. All right. So let's take a look at this first slide. In my hypothetical example, you're going to buy 100 shares of Ford. You know, we've talked about Ford numerous times, you know, a dividend stock. That's basically what the play is on Ford, okay? Hypothetically, we're going to say Ford is trading today at $10 a share. It closed at like $9.50 or something, so, okay, but just there, all right. But I wanted to use Ford for an example because we've got a dividend number. So if you buy 100 shares at 10 bucks a share, your cash outlay is 1000 bucks. I'm not including commissions or fees or anything like that that you may have to pay. I'm just talking flat out stock price by how many shares you bought. Ford pays a dividend of 15 cents per quarter. Now, dividends can change. Most of the time, companies will raise their dividend, but they can be cut too, I'm just telling you. I'm not bringing that into play at this point either. All right, just want to give you the understanding of this. So if they pay 15 cents a quarter, mathematically you can figure this out, that's 16 or 60 cents per year. So therefore, your dividend on 100 shares of Ford would be $60 a year, right? Okay, makes sense. So you're going to collect 60 bucks. You paid $1,000. Therefore, your annual percentage yield on Ford is 6%. Okay. Hope, hope you're with me so far. If not, try to go back, watch that segment again. So, moving on along, let's say, for example, Ford drops in price, right? like it did over the last couple of days. And Ford was actually down in the eights here. Ford was $10 a share, 10 and change sometime last week. It was eight and change yesterday. So let's say, hypothetically again, yesterday Ford got down to $8 even, and you bought 100 shares of Ford at $8 a share your cash outlay is now 800 bucks. You have the same 
100 shares is the person who bought it last week for $1,000. Each one of you has 100 shares. Doesn't matter what you pay for the stock, each share pays 15 cents dividend per quarter. You have 100 shares, therefore you're still going to get a $60 dividend over the course of the year, four times 15. However, you only paid $800 to get that 60 bucks. So your yield, and I got it, your yield is 7.5%, 60 divided by 800. Are you seeing the difference? You owe the exact same asset as the person who bought it last week at 10, but because you bought cheaper, your yield is higher. Now, if you put the same $1,000 in, now what? You got mm, at eight bucks a share, 200 bucks is going to be what? Another 25 shares? Okay. So now you could put the same $1,000 in, but you'd make what? 70 bucks or something like that? You know, they're about, I'm ballparking the math here in my head. Okay. So as the price comes down on a stock, your yield is going to go up. Are you with me so far? Okay. All right. So let's move on to what a lot of people buy. Let's apply this to bonds. And whether these are corporate bonds, whether these are treasury bonds, you know, treasury bills, short term, treasury notes, medium term, treasury bonds, long term. Okay. They're broken out by time frame. Bills are less than a year. Notes are anywhere from two to five, and bonds are anywhere five and above. Okay. This also works, works exactly the same as CDs. Okay. Whether you're buying new issue or open market, new issue means it's brand new to the market. They're bringing it out today. Poof. Already on the market. Now the price is fluctuating. So, first of all, as I'm explaining there, you need to know what PAR is. Like in golf, you know, par four hole or whatever it is. Par is the issue price. Bonds, CDs, issue at a par price of $1,000. That's pretty much standard across the board, okay? So you want to buy $10,000 worth of T-bills, you're buying 10 T-bills or 10 CDs, whatever it would be. The bank will, you want to go and buy $2,500 CD, the bank will break it out. You're buying two and a half CDs, okay? That's what it is. So let's hypothetically say you buy, and for sake of argument, I changed it on the sheet, so you bill note or bond. But let's, I'm just, to make it easy for me to speak, I'm just going to say treasury bonds, okay? So you buy one treasury bond. It's a new issue. Like we had an auction today, okay, one o'clock, Treasury came out. These are new issue bonds. Let's just say today you bought it at a thousand dollars. You bought one bond. Great, thousand bucks. Fed says, Treasury says the interest is going to be five percent. Great. Okay. You know you are going to get fifty dollars a year. It works exact the same way as I explained it with Ford. You're going to get 5% of $1,000 every year, whether it pays monthly, quarterly, annually, whatever. You're going to get 50 bucks over the course of the year. No matter what the bond market does, you can see all these swings you hear every day. Oh, the 10-year did this, the 30-year did this. Does not matter, okay? You bought 1000 bucks, 5%, you are going to get $50 a year, end of story, the end, okay? This is where APR and APY are the same because you bought at par. Now, like I said, we all hear, see all the time, bond market's up, bond market's down, it did this, yada, 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 right? All right, so let's take a look at what could happen. And I'll just give you one scenario. Okay. So two weeks from now, hypothetically, the Federal Reserve announces they are cutting interest rates by a half, half a percent, 50 basis points, okay? 
a basis point, for those of you guys who don't know, is one one hundredth of a percent. So 50 basis points is half a percent. And so the next time the Treasury comes out and issues more bonds, the interest rate they're paying is now 4.5%. But you still own that bond you bought two weeks ago at par at 5%, right? Now, what do you think happens to the bond that you own? If I want to go out and buy a new one, it's 4.5%. You're getting paid 5 Well, I'd rather get 5 than 4.5%, right? Sure. Well, that means your bond is now gone up in price. Okay, it's more valuable. You know, I'd rather get five percent, you know, fifty dollars a year than forty-five dollars a year, wouldn't you? Okay. So I've got to pay you a premium for it. So if somebody wants to hire a coupon, they got to pay more for what you own, right? Okay. So. Ballpark, it just made numbers easy. Let's say your 5% coupon, the bond is now worth $1,020. If you want to sell it, you're going to get $1,020. If I want to buy it, I'm going to have to pay $1,020. I'm not getting into the difference of bid and ask, okay? We're not going to discuss spread here. Okay. But again, to make math easy. So if I want to buy it from you, I got to pay you $1,020 then I'll get the $50 a month, but I paid $1,020, not 1000 bucks like you did. So what does that turn into? Well, that's when you get into this. Your APR, your annual percentage rate, the bond I just bought from you for 1020 my annual percentage rate I'm going to get is still 5% of the par price the thousand dollars so i get the 50 bucks but my apy my annual percentage yield what i'm actually netting is 50 dollars divided by 1020 which is 4.9 percent which is still better than what the fed just came out with at 4.5 percent are you seeing why there's a bond market okay now this works in reverse as well okay if the fed raised rates a half a point 50 basis points okay now the bond is let's say only worth 980 dollars and oh my god you need money transmission went in your car you need to sell your bond okay oh crap i gotta take a 20 dollar loss in it but okay i need the cash i gotta fix the car i buy it from you for $980, the coupon I'm going to get, the payment I'm going to is still 50 bucks because 5% of 1,000. However, my yield is now 5.1% because it's $50 divided by 980, what I spent. I hope that explains it. But this is, when you see the difference, when the bank tells you the APR is this, the APY is this, okay? Or you're buying a car and you see both of them. It's like, oh, your annual percentage rate is 2.3%, but your APY is 2.5%. That difference at the beginning, on a, on a loan, for example, those are the fees they're charging you that are added in there. Okay, you're not, you're paying it, but that's kind of coming up front. Just giving you that as an idea. Same thing when you're buying a CD. Unless the APR and the APY are not exactly the same, they're putting a fee into it. This is why when you buy a CD at a hundred bucks, CDs go in at a hundred dollars. Okay, it may price out at. 99.25 as soon as you buy it because the bank charged you 75 cents in commission to buy it and that gets added in but that's how apr and api apy work i know a lot of you guys asked me that question i just wanted to show you to it i i hope my pencil cell if you will explained it well enough that you understand but that's how you can tell 
what you're trying to accomplish if what the investment you're looking at is actually going to accomplish what you're doing. And trust me, it's exactly what I look at. Have a good evening, y'all. Pinball out.